Okay, good morning everybody. Nice frosty day today. So I just wanted to get on and talk a little bit about why I ride. I mean, it's a legitimate question, right? I'm in my mid-50s. Statistically speaking, riding is not safe to begin with. And as you get older, it just becomes more unsafe. And I've already been in one accident and that took a year, more or less, of litigation and healing to get all fixed up again. So you might think, didn't you learn your lesson? Why are you back on a bike again? Can't you see that it could hurt you or you could die? I mean, fair points. And, you know, if you're a motorcycle rider and you're watching this, you've already got reasons that you're listing out in your head right now as I'm speaking. You know, if I pose the question, why do you ride? You're already generating a list of reasons. And so I'm just gonna break down a little bit why I like to ride. I mean, in, in earlier videos, I said I always kind of had a fascination with it, but that doesn't mean I would like it if I tried it. There's a very good chance I might have not liked it. Oftentimes what we have as a vision in our head for what we like, you know, oftentimes that when reality uh, meets our expectations, reality falls short and we don't like it whatever that it may be. In this case, the expectation and reality did actually meet up with one another. So as I was putting on my gear this morning, and <laughs> I was thinking, why do I do this? It's taken me so much longer to get ready to go to work when I could just hop in my car and go. And so I wanted to explore that a little bit today. I think the first thing that I noticed when I actually started riding and not just putzing around town trying to get, you know, trying to get used to the idea of being on two wheels, that wasn't a bicycle. The first thing that I noticed, like when I'm going down a road like this, is just how in your face everything is. So like, you know, you're in your car and you have your dashboard and you have your steering wheel and you have the hood out in front of you and you have all that stuff out in front of you. On a motorcycle, generally speaking, you don't have that. Now I have a windshield in front of me, that's true, and that's, you know, mainly for wind protection in the wintertime and bug protection in the summertime. <laughs> I don't like getting my leathers and all my other gear splattered with bug guts every day. But that's not quite the same thing. If I wanted to, I could very easily pop that windshield off and be just fine. And I have. I don't have a hood in front of me. It's like everything is right there. If I was younger and more nimble, I could lean down and touch the road if I wanted to. Uh, if I try that now, I'm just going to wreck. That's all there is to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there won't be any of that going on. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Potentially, everything is right there. Absolutely, everything is in your face. You know... The smells, some of them pleasant, some of them not so much, especially here in Kansas. Some of the roads I take for fun take me by cattle stockyards. 
and you know what I still have fun I still appreciate it because everything again is so visceral so raw so right up in your face another thing I noticed when I started riding was especially at first I didn't have a cardo pack talk or anything like that so I wasn't listening to any music and so I was just alone with my own thoughts and so that gave me a lot of time to you know just that gave me a different setting not necessarily a lot of time but a different setting in which I could just kind of you know just think about things think about life think about you know who I am and and where I'm going that kind of thing and and who I am and where I'm going doesn't change really rapidly <laughs> but as I'm getting closer to retirement yeah I think about those things a little bit and now we're coming up on an exceptionally bumpy stretch of road so I'm going to quit talking until I get to the other side of this I'll see you on the other side of the transition all right, I think I'm past the worst of it now. So I was talking about how riding a motorcycle, it allows you, or I don't know, it causes me to think a little bit more. When I'm in my car, I just tend to like <laughs> go deadhead and autopilot. I mean, look at where I'm at, right? I drive one of two ways to work and both of those ways are wide open roads with a total of five stops. Um, not a whole lot in the way of intersections. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at it now on your screen, right? <laughs> so yeah, but on a motorcycle, even though I know this road well and I'm very familiar with it, I don't go deadhead mode. I'm always more mentally in the now. To help stay that way, I tend to think about things a lot more than I do than when I'm in my car. When I'm in my car, I'm, I'm listening to radio or podcast or, you know, music of some kind or another. And it's not always the case when I'm on my bike. Yes, I do listen to music on my bike, but not nearly as often as I do when I'm in my car. And so I tend to stay in the now, in the, in the moment when I'm riding. And you need to, because it is such a more dangerous activity than just getting in your car, slapping on your safety belt knowing that you have crumpled zones and airbags all around you and if anything happens more than likely you're going to be okay clearly that's not the case on a bike and you know thirdly i just found i love it you know i just love it i love being on my bike i'd rather travel on my bike you know more often than any other means like I said if, if temperatures get too cold and it becomes a detriment to me because I don't do short rides you know particularly short anyway like if I only have to go five minutes it's not worth it for me to get all geared up and go <laughs> But, like, you know, if I'm traveling to work, if it dips down into the 20s, like it probably will here in a few weeks, I won't be riding in that. My gear just can't take it. And I'm not so sure it's safe to do anyway, like on the road. I've never ridden in real sketchy conditions like snow and ice on a bike. And frankly, there's a part of me that's not really anxious to stretch that boundary. Like right now, I just checked the temperature on my phone here not too long ago. It's, it's 
upper 30s. That's not bad. My gear can take that. I can take that. And so, because I love riding, I'm willing to go through the extra trouble to just come out here and do it in this colder temperature, even if it is going to work. I uh, will say one thing. Riding to and from work is not riding. <laughs> it's like saying, you know, I, I, I drove my car today because I went to work. Well, technically, yeah, you did drive your car, but you didn't enjoy it. You weren't you are going to work and then when you're coming home you're tired and you're not enjoying it then either I don't know some people do I'm not that guy if I'm if, if I'm riding to work that's business and my mind is not saying this is a fun run I'm still enjoying my time on my bike but it's a different mentality whereas if I go out for a couple of hours on the Saturday or Sunday and I am not going to work and maybe I'm not going anywhere I'm just exploring now that's fun that is what being having a motorcycle is is about at least in this country now I'm not the kind of person to have a toy just for the sake of having a toy so yeah I do ride my bike to work more as often as I can to justify the cost of having a bike, to justify having a toy, I guess. Like, if all I was doing was just weekend riding, I probably wouldn't have a bike. It, it, the cost versus the use ratio doesn't make sense to me. So, the more I use it, the more uh, return on investment, I guess you could say, I get out of it. And that frees me up mentally to actually enjoy it more. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's how I approach it. But yeah, I definitely enjoy it more on the weekends when I can get out for a couple of hours and just bop around and, and you know, not have to worry about what time it is and do I need to be back do I need to act, you know be to work and stuff like that if I got certain obligations of course I'm going to take care of those but yeah the best time is when I can just be free I guess just for that small little window because that is really why people buy motorcycles more than anything I think not saying I want to be free from everything all the time, but having that little window is a nice uh, refreshing thing. It's a nice little recharge. And I think most people that ride motorcycles understand that. So are there things that, you know, those are my top three things that I like that, that that compel me to keep riding. Now, there are some things that, you know, also work against that, but come with the territory. One, it's inconvenient. Holy smokes. And that's my, that's my own fault, I guess, if you will. I refuse to not have gear. I refuse to not wear gear, and full gear at that. Um... So that makes riding somewhat inconvenient. Like I said, it took me 20 minutes to get all of my stuff on so that I could ride with a decent level of comfort in these mid to high 30 temperatures. That's not convenient. <laughs> it takes me longer to get ready for work. And if I wanna make a video like I am today, then oftentimes, you know, I'm struggling to find, okay, I need to have a thumbnail, I need to have an intro, I need to do this, I need to do that. Instead of just getting in my car and going to work. Like, I could have stayed home 20 minutes longer, nice and warm and snug. <laughs> you know, if I weren't wanting to ride my bike. And in the summertime, it's no better. I don't go out without my gear in the summertime. I just wear different gear. 
I guess another thing is it's not always comfortable. Aside from the temperature thing, just sitting in this in, in, in a certain position can get tiresome, can get very uncomfortable. Uh, my bike, for example, the Vulcan S, it's okay for shorter runs, but if I want to take two or three hours, there's got to be a break in there somewhere because my butt does not like it. <laughs> And sometimes I get a nice pain right between my shoulder blades upper, you know, on the upper part of my back. Not always, it's not consistent, so I don't know what to nail it down to, but yeah, it's not, it's not comfortable. So yeah, there's always times where I gotta, you know, just get off the bike and move my body in a different way to loosen everything back up. And of course, then there's the danger factor. Even on a road like this, in fact, it was this road, this, this lonely little road <laughs> that I got wrecked on. I told you there were five stops on my route to work, no matter which way I take. And one of those stops is an intersection and a person pulled out in front of me. It's like, and you see this road and you're like, how do you not see me? There's nothing in your way. <laughs> <laughs> but you know poopy happens right so all those 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 you know so those things the uh discomfort um the danger the uh inconvenience of it all they don't outweigh the previous good things that I listed. And that's a person by person assessment, right? Different people ride for different reasons. Those are just the reasons why I ride. And the things that would work against it, they're just not enough. They're just not enough. I would prefer this openness. I prefer this rawness over anything else and the risks are worth it so long as I manage the risks properly and that's a whole nother video managing risks and anyway I think that's where I'm gonna end this video you know if you ride and I have a very small base right now, but I know some of you ride. <laughs> Go ahead and drop down why, drop down in the comment section why you ride. You know, do we have something in common or do you ride for reasons completely different? With that, I'm out of here. See ya.